Good morning and welcome back to the IFBA Olympics at Bulls and Balls folder. So Eric from Belgium, Johannes from Germany, Daniele from Italy, Andrew from the yeah. UK. It was quite funny earlier, I was uh, speaking to Eric and he said he said he's had the best weekend ever. He said yeah. he got 40 points in one competition, 25, and he said it's the best he's ever finished ever. And now he's in the he's top in four again. Tremendous, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, we'll uh, be giving him a lot of congratulations um, when we see him later on after these finals. What are the machines in the final, Jim? Uh, machines M33, I can tell you what that is. M33 is Whirlwind. Ooh. Andrew will like that one. Okay, uh, next Tommy. one is Tommy. He, he doesn't like Tommy, Andrew. Andrew. Next one is Fishtails. Oh, we had a on Fishtails earlier. And number four is oh, Rush. Rush. Oh. Okay. This hey. one, Whirlwind. Okay, so here we go. Game one, final of the Ping Golf Tour tour tournament. Day three of skill shot. Right, catch the up, my ball side. So FPA Olympics. Okay, so uh, yeah. We go through arrows. Rest. Nice control. So, Johannes already has his uh, first locklet, which you do by completing the arrows on the whirlwind uh, compass. Okay. Takes another skill shot, which is generally considered to be dangerous. Um, I've actually seen him play uh, multiple um, multiple ramps as well, because that can actually score lots of points. Here he goes. So Skyway Toll after Skyway Toll, Skyway Toll. Oh, yeah. So this is exactly the way he played this machine in the last final when he was here. Great catch. Just easily takes that. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Wow, wow, wow. wow. That was, uh, we've, we've got to have a replay of that. That was, uh, that was awesome. Okay, so that's lock, uh, lock one. So now he has to complete the uh, uh, rest of the direction targets. So there'll be... Oh no, sorry, he's, um, that's, he's on... Quick detail, quick... No, he's on... Hmm, I'm not sure where he is. Oh, he's on... He's on... Uh, yeah, quick detail. So you can just keep sending it around and some little oh, look yeah. in the ramp for the millions. So he's just going to try to get it onto that. Okay, exactly. so drain. So uh, it'll be go back to his uh, normal strategy here. So, there we go, second lock. And uh, multi ball start uh, will be next. Got it. And there we go, multi ball start. So, objective in multi ball is to shoot this centre ramp. <laughs> that gives you uh, millions plus. So, that gave him a million plus how many? Three, three million, was it? So now on to quick multi ball. Such a good score already. I know, and the, I mean these players just do this like uh, it's you know it's just normal.
So he's actually trying to get this uh, lock shot at the yeah. moment here. So that's what he achieves. So quick multi ball again. <coughs> the uh, the jackpot is uh, around the centre round. Stage the top flipper. Oh, nice. oh, he deserves that. Oh, so he's going to keep trying to do the same. Stage it under the thing, to send it round, or he's going to send it round the left orbit. There you go, that's one. Gonna get him back under control. Then decide which way he's gonna send this next one around. Oh, there you go, look at that. Open, yeah, up, up an orbit mm. and uh, perfectly back in control. He's, he's gonna send that around the orbit there. I think that's because he, he can get the power into the shot from the top flipper. And also, when you when you when you talk about your harness, you, you think about his Iron Maiden games, where he just keeps looping, looping, looping. That's right. He, and he has such amazing skill level and timing. Yeah. 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 Really when anything has got a loop, and really really looping, when we watch Daniele on uh, Getaway, it's the same kind of uh, strategy your harness goes for. He just keeps ripping the loops. The storm is over. All clear. It's uh, honestly a joy to watch. Because you know when people design these pinball machines, they weren't ever expecting anyone to have this skill level. No, um, I'm sure. I'm sure that's the case. I mean, the the skill level in pinball. Um, I mean, it must. It must have been. A lot of skill, yeah. you know, in, in the in the sixties and seventies. I, I I used to play then in um, well in the in the seventies definitely. I used to play in in uh, cafes and things. There used to be a lot of pinball machines, uh, YMCA, and um, and we would have played some really good pinball. You know, I mean, yeah. it's um, whether we ever had these sorts of skills, but I do remember doing uh, alley passing and things. Um, from those days, because you had to. You uh, were depend. You needed to get a, a, a replay in order to keep playing. Yeah, um, we've got a, we've got a good little debate. Richard says he should just walk off here and now. And someone's just said, "Well, Danielle's in this group, but you've also got Andy Foster. This is his jam. All of these players know how to play this machine. So your harness is not going to." Flutter anything. He's going to try to put the biggest, biggest lead possible, possible score up. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And it's not just putting it up. If you put a score up that looks unimaginable, you, you play a, a psychological game as well. Because yeah. that player who's coming up against you is fighting it. He's fighting it a score, but he's also fighting the emotion that you've just put up a monster score. So, no, he's going to. Just keep rinsing and repeating everything over and over and over again until he's unlucky to lose the ball. And uh, each time he does that uh, centre ramp shot, it actually qualifies one of the direction targets. So it's yeah, actually pretty much every Skyward uh, Skyway now is a hundred thousand. Oh yeah, they, yeah, Sky Skyway. Uh, totals are actually really valuable if you yeah. can consistently hit them. He's racked them up now. Yeah, so. But no, you're absolutely right. Johannes won't uh, stop playing because he doesn't know what's going to happen next. Yeah, so it's the so first it's game just... of many, so win the last game on Dirty Harry. Yep. He knew he couldn't influence the decision of the, the game, so he didn't need to play, but this is the first game of four, yep. so he will play till his fingers fall off. Well, <laughs> <laughs> Look at here! Sound 
is terrific. What's wrong with the sound? It is terrific. Hey Neil, could you just quantify what's horrific? Is it the is there a, a static noise? I'm just gonna listen to that Sounds fine. Right, okay, so Didier, ball one. Ooh, look at that. Look at the difference in that. Salador and uh, Dina just adjusted the display there so we can actually yeah. see these. Unfortunately, uh, it's almost impossible to tell which one is lit and which isn't lit. It's uh, good control by Eric. And you will notice when Daniele comes to the, uh, to the machine, he will actually uh, put his hand over yeah. um, to actually see which one is lit because it's actually quite important. The cellar door is lit by going down this inlay and it's lit at the beginning of each ball um, but that's actually that rolling the ball up and back down and then straight back into the cellar door is actually an excellent strategy if you can play it. The, um, the prizes you get are here and then there's a um, award for completing all of the cellar door prizes. So well worth doing that. Um, and if you watch um, a number of the uh, tutorial streams available, that is one of the strategies that will be explained. Nice backhand. Again. I like the way he's doing that, sort of rolling the ball back up the yeah, flipper and then gets it. So you're not going to clip anything. That. That's absolutely great control, absolutely awesome. Okay, so um, I think he's showing, I think Eric's showing here why he's do doing really, really well this weekend. This is, this is a, 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 absolutely awesome play. Okay, perfect control. Oh no, Neil just saying it's the game, not the stream. Yeah. Okay. I think it's great, sir. So. Okay, um, right. He's actually trying to go for the cellar door. They could have got another top loop there, that would have been very useful. Making good progress with the uh, with the direction arrows as well. Okay, so seller lit. That's a quick multi ball. So he will be probably doing this backhand again up into the uh, lock shot. So some great ball time. Also controlled. He's keeping very, very good control, and that's a great yeah, backhand again. Again, we can multi ball. Uh, so one billion uh, for the jackpot on the on the loop. Oh, yeah, you only need two. <laughs> Indeed, he likes to have the second ball crowded on the left so he uh, doesn't yep. have to stage. There we go. So, we're going to send it round the orbit and around. No, he's gone the other way. We've got the tip. Let's get it under control. No, it's uh, lost, 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 lost a little grass period. Uh, this is quick multi ball, so there's no. Oh, there's, sorry, there's a grace on the jackpot, yeah. But... Okay, okay, so this is a seller, so we can get a seller multi ball from a quick multi ball as well. Okay, um. 
Close. Ain't no reason to get tricked. Oh, oh, come on, on you should have flipped. Should have flipped. Should've flipped. <laughs> it was, it was the sleep. Come on, Eric. Do him a dig about that tomorrow. <laughs> He'll probably say, "Well, I was asleep." <laughs> he might say some what, do you, what, what, do you, what do you expect me to do when I'm asleep? <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. You need to tell me earlier. He said, uh, are you going to do the mental health analysis? Yes, I am crazy. And I like to play the pinball. <laughs> yeah. That's what he should have done. Okay, I just got that person's uh, comments. Don't. Discount the monster victory in its handing. He's making some good progress here. Yeah. Okay, so he lights the cellar door again. And uh, now that's extra ball lit. So you really need to know how many of these are actually lit. Because they must be getting close to a super, super door score. Oh, oh, nice dig. Well, well. Oh, I can't think again. And he's got it. Very, very successfully. Nice. Oh, beautiful. Yeah, great centre post anticipation. Is destroying it. Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, okay, I've lost count of how many uh, solid door scores is that. Is Lisa now? Eric's been around for quite a long time. Wow, that was a pretty awesome ball. I mean, he's uh, he's not caught Johannes' score, but wow, that was that was pretty tremendous. Yeah, Andy's stepping up now. He's tired. He's got a couple of good scores on the board. Yep. So he's gonna he's gonna play as hard as he can. Good control. Really nice control. He'll be aiming for the uh, cellar. There we go, straight in. So one million is lit. That's around again, the uh, centre ramp. Think about Andy, he'll get control and he won't rush. He'll try to keep it under control as long as he can. Figure yep. out what he wants to shoot. He'll go for it in his own time. He's just trying to find the, trying to find the flippers. I don't think he's played well in this weekend. But he's he's, he's going to try to familiarise himself with the pinball. Okay, unfortunate drain. Um, so uh, two more balls to play. So plenty of plenty of time in this game yet. Um, here we go with Johannes ball two. Great catch. Yeah, you're right in the chat as well. But Eric is um, he's coming into the final against three highly ranked players. Absolutely, yeah. And he's yeah. Uh, at the moment he's uh, showing his worth. He's second. Take 
sort of amazingly, the, the spinning discs don't seem to affect mm. the animals at yeah. all, do they? The ball gets thrown off in a different direction. They just automatically compensate for it. Yeah. Uh, so he doesn't get stressed, he doesn't change what he's doing. Do you know what wouldn't surprise me if, if the younger ones know which way they spin for how long and how it affects the and ball and... Maybe. Yeah. It's all it's all it's programmed, isn't it? Like we were saying earlier about NBA fast track and Peter knows every trivia question. <laughs> yeah, but come on, some mechanical spinning discs and a metal ball. It's, it's gonna just be gonna be programmed just, in the chip though, it's isn't it? It's just gonna be random in in the, what effect it has. Oh there we go. Oh no, he loses the ball. But he's got the uh Oh sorry, sorry he starts a multi ball, so okay, so he's just down to two two balls. That was absolutely brilliant. That, you know, I mean it really is tremendous how it how he controls things. Okay, he tried to just save the ball again there. With a little nudge of a flipper. But he's now on 17 million, okay. and he's not going to stop. He'll just keep uh, keep on playing. So, okay, let's have a go at the uh, the Salador uh, prizes now. Let's. Um... <laughs> but to, uh... oops, I'm not quite sure what he was doing there. That I think was one of his little flipper tricks. Trick shots, but I think it didn't, it's like, uh, didn't like come off. Um, yes, I think it, it probably is quite safe here. And uh, the, the 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 thing is, I mean, I've seen I've seen Daniele play uh, games like this before, yeah. and just come back. Yeah, you know, um, and, oh. and they could come back in one ball. So. Thank God for lying tomorrow. And uh, that's an example of why you do a short plunge on this machine, because if you don't hit any switches... You get it back. Uh, you get it back. So you can just again. keep doing this over and over and over again. It's a good strategy for like something like Scared Stiff as well when you're trying to get the spider. Yep. Short plunge over and over. <laughs> he did. Oh, there you go. That was really, really nice. That was um, really cheeky. He's like, well, I'm going to bounce it off the centre post. I don't need to do it because I'm going to get it back. But let's do it anyway. Let's just do it anyway. Okay, extra ball. That means absolutely nothing. Do you have any points in the game for it? or? No, I'm not sure, to be honest. Uh, the storm I don't, I don't is know. coming. Return to your home. Okay, so quick multi ball. That means a bit more. The storm is coming. Return to your home. The storm is coming. Return to your home. So nails the uh, multi ball lock shot. So multi ball will start. Bring you in a bit closer. So you'll now see him shoot actually under the ramp. Okay, so he's playing he's playing round the orbit, which is uh stage there we go uh, staging is when the bottom flipper stays with this ball trapped uh, but he has separate control uh, of the top flipper that was an excellent example of staging well, uh, well played Daniel okay but then uh, loses the ball Take cover 
This is uh, moving him towards um, the normal multi ball, the main multi ball of uh, Whirlwind. So, short plunge again. So, if he loses the ball, that's fine. Gets perfect control. Plays the solid or and uh, he is looking for completion of that. I am absolutely sure. There we go. Uh, that roll, roll up and down the in lane is perfect. So we got super solid or score there. Open out. Um, that's a really, really unfortunate drain. I hate it when that happens. It's sort of it's something that should never happen on a pinball machine, and unfortunately, it does. Um, so uh, Daniel, he finishes on five point. Well, they were on board to five point six million. Um, er Eric is already on five point five. Oh, excuse me. So. Um, See if, uh, if he can pull forward from here. Finishes uh, ball two just slightly ahead of Daniele there with uh, with 5.7. Okay, Andy Foster, who is looking tired. Again, gets nice control. The storm is coming. Return to your home. Oh well, that was uh, yeah, that was definitely savable. So um, unfortunate there. But here we go with this uh, Johannes guy. So a uh, million shot, and uh, Johannes also must be pretty pretty close to the uh, Super Salador if he's not already completed that. now uh, lock lit for the next multi ball so um, yeah which or, which order did you play things in uh, difficult decision so lock um, there's al already one ball locked down here so therefore the uh, uh, the lock has to be underneath the ramp Rejection from 
from the lock shot. But I think uh, Johannes is going to be okay with that. Uh, 20 million plus. Wow. I think any of us would be happy with uh, that 21.3 million on Whirlwind. Wow. Ah, hi, Ollie. Ollie Miko. Um, yeah. Nice to, nice to see you on the charts, Ollie. It's a bit late in the morning for where you are. Uh, anyway. Okay, uh, Daniele Acciari. A very delicate control there. And now you can, of course, work your way around these uh, cellar door prizes again. So um, that's why he has a million shot lit. Mega door bonus. Okay, so two million points. Okay, this is where it lights everything. Okay, so uh, yeah, absolutely great. And the fact that he managed not to tilt that is amazing. Because they certainly moved the machine a long way. <laughs> so, uh... he is now showing why he is. Oh, and he went out again. Oh, wow. But uh, this is why Daniele uh, is four times world champion. Uh, this um, ability to pull that. Uh, reserve out of nowhere and the game knowledge as well to know that because he advanced basically six, uh, four million points there uh, from nowhere and um, abs absolutely tremendous play But Eric is not going to give up at this stage. He will uh, continue to fight. So he also gets super door score and uh, he will have just seen what Daniele did on this, uh, on the last ball. So he can also collect the mega door bonus. Nice control. Now, do you shoot for the next multi ball? Yes, yeah, we've really got to. So, he needs this rather dangerous target here if he wants to get to multi ball. Uh, I think, to be honest, he has to go for it. Uh, no, no, it's probably, no, he doesn't have to go for it. Oh, oh, oh unfortunate. Um, I was going to say he could actually just shoot another top um, top ramp and that would give him that letter anyway. So... Okay, so... If Eric or Andy beat your Hannah's score, I'll buy you all a drink next time. <laughs> yeah, cheers, Rich. That was, that was a good, uh, that was a good bet. Okay, uh, but who knows? Andy Foster, 800, 842,000. Um, he could play a mega ball here. Let's see. Return to your home. Oh, and uh, nothing he could do about that. So that's the end of game one. Uh, we are playing four games, I have no idea why, uh, but I have a feeling, um, yeah, Grand Champion, no wonder that's a Grand Champion score. Okay. So we'll uh, switch to the second rig, uh, which is going to be Tommy. Um, Tommy, absolutely awesome play field, I mean, look, look at that for a layout, absolutely fantastic. And... Um, yeah, so 
Tommy is pretty much all about multi-ball. Um, the, it's probably stacked too much in terms of its scoring. Uh, if you play a really good multi-ball, you will win a game. If you play a really poor multi-ball, you will not. And you can make points up with the modes, but um, you will never compensate for the multi-ball score. Okay, that's the end of uh, that ball for Johannes. But he made some progress there. He hit the Tommy, he hit the mirror. This is the uh, uh, the Tommy mirror that gets broken. Um, the game, of course, is all is all about the Tommy the film. Um, so it follows uh, the deaf and blind kid who was a pinball wizard and the. Uh, the modes are very much around Tommy's upbringing of uh, considerable abuse, shall we say. I mean, Tommy, Tommy was a uh, not supposed to be a particularly happy film. So, yeah, I think uh, most people will have seen uh, Tommy, uh, Tommy, Tommy, uh, Tommy, uh, the Tommy Pinball Machine before. If not, then. Um, just enjoy it because it, it, it really is a, a, a an absolutely beautiful artwork. I mean, okay, so what Daniel is doing at the moment, uh, this is the mode start shot. Shot. You can also shoot in here the Asi Queen, and then it will be playing to knock the mirror. And once you've broken the mirror enough times, it will uh, light. Multi ball. Oh, and unfortunately, I nearly tilts the. Uh, he made a slight error there on the uh, the the tip pass and uh, had to pay for it by moving the machine and uh, yeah, subsequently tilted. So. Mm -hmm. We've got Leventi on. Leventi, what are you doing up at this time in the morning? It is uh, 10 to 4. So, um, anyway, good to see you. We've not seen you, uh, we've not seen you at Fulda for some time. Be, uh, great to see you back any time you can get here. So Eric, uh, let's see what he can do as well on uh, Tommy. So, yeah, it's a couple of hits on the mirror. And he's playing a, a, a fairly safe strategy here, which is to uh, shoot up into this end, end shot, which feeds round to the upper flipper and then into Tommy. But that shot also uh, gives you um, multiple points, uh, increasing points as you advance through the game. Unfortunate. He got a, he got a horrible rejection there out of the mode start, and just uh, went down through the centre of the flippers. Uh, definitely very unfortunate. Sun will rise in an hour. That's a nice sobering thought. Thank you very, very much for that day. Uh, yep. Uh, the sun is probably already out in some parts of the world, if you want to look at it from another point of view. And, um, yeah, who knows? Uh, Andy did tell me that he really doesn't like this machine when, <laughs> when I was talking to him earlier. Um, so, uh, 
Okay, we'll see. Uh, we'll see how he does. He's uh, coming. He's, he's coming back from the machine into the bar area. Uh, you can see the players. Uh, the to Tommy is right down here at the bottom, and uh, so you can see basically players come back and they watch the game on the stream, which is on a big, uh, big television just outside the, the commentary booth just over here. Uh, and that they find that a lot easier. They've been doing that for quite some time. They find that a lot easier than uh, watching over the shoulder of the other player. Um, what it does mean is there tends to be a little bit of a delay between the player going back because uh, Okay, so what, what I said earlier is is correct. You will need to play this multi ball well, so he needs this side this side jackpot. So uh, basically, this double jackpot shot here he needs next, and that's what he will be going for. And now he's out of multi ball, and he's scored nothing. So uh, he's actually now in jail because starting the multi ball again is uh, difficult. So um, that's this is not a good position for Johannes at the moment. Uh, he's a, actually an awesome guy. I mean, he he will. Uh, he will come here play some great tournaments but he's also perfectly happy playing uh, social pinball with the rest of the pinball guys um, uh, yeah uh, and, and also a great fun guy too so um, yeah hats off to Johannes uh, and uh, of course this guy's no uh, slouch when it comes to pinball We've uh, watched some great games with Daniele over the years that we've been streaming. And that's multi ball start. So here we go. Let's see what Daniele can do with this game. He will be uh, actually feeling quite good at the moment because, say, Johannes didn't play a very good multi ball. And if you do play a good multi ball, you will finish up with a, with a, a score which is difficult to beat. And if anything there's sort of too many balls to get in the way of each other. It's sort of nice when you get down to less balls and you can trap up and uh, control the ball because hmm, that was a nice backhand of the ramp that's uh, interesting okay it's the uh, Wow, this is nice. So that's um, 20 million a shot for going straight into the mirror. Have you seen this? Because this, this flipper actually never moves. He's doing all that without this flipper moving at all. He's now in this mode where he's blind, so this is the uh, dumb deaf blind kid. Uh, sure plays a meme from ball, that's, uh, that's the mode. And it's amazing that he can actually play. Okay, so he's, uh, I think that's the end of that mode. Come on, move the disc background. Ah, okay. We need a technician here. Do we have a technician? 
He's got a stuck visor. <laughs> oh dear, that's got to be that's got to be just sort of the typical thing that happens at uh, five to four in the morning. Okay, is that we don't get a stuck ball, we get a stuck visor. Uh, I think we need. I think we actually need a uh, a good tech here, and I'm not sure. Oh, okay, it's cleared. <laughs> I'm really pleased that's cleared. We could have been uh, we could have been replaying the games or something. Uh, okay, <laughs> awesome. Um, right, off we go. We're continuing. So this is now really about working your way around the modes. Uh, And uh, yeah, I think that that's pretty much what you don't know. You don't usually see players playing the modes, okay? Um, but having having done a, a pretty good multiple, that might be actually exactly what uh, Danielli does. Uh, this this is the normal strategy that you just um, uh, you just keep starting the next mode. You enable the next mode by the spinner, so uh, you have to shoot the spinner in order to um, in order to light the acid queen. So here we go with the next one. But you've got a lot of modes to go around. I mean, there's uh, yeah. This Union Jack's, Jack's quite full of modes, so... And this is the video mode that makes absolutely no sense. I don't think it makes any difference whether you stay and catch... You are supposed to catch these things, these bombs and planes and... I'll give it, uh, yeah, probably one of the worst video modes in the whole of pinball. Apart from, I suppose, the Game of Thrones is one that's pretty, pretty awful as well. So we'll be shooting the Union Jack again now. Okay, next mode, smash the mirror. And we will actually probably see him uh, doing this, this uh, two ball multi ball. Ignores the mode, goes for the next mode. Uh, I'll see the queen. So, okay, so ball lost, but I think that was a pretty awesome score from Daniele. Uh, yeah, pretty, pretty good. So yes, you're absolutely right, Johannes has climbed to 15th in the world after the first tournaments this week and um, they are, uh, those points are going to continue to rise obviously from his um, extended tournaments throughout the next couple of days. Uh, Toby, uh, our country director, posted the 
tournament results from the Wednesday night welcome tournament on straight after the tournament at two o'clock in the morning on uh, Thursday. And they were approved and accepted by the IFBA. He submitted the ping golf tournament the day after, straight after the tournament. And both of those tournaments are now on uh, the players IFBA uh, page, which is a pretty awesome, uh, pretty awesome way to run tournaments. Um, uh, I know. Uh, I, I do a tournament directing of uh, tournament scenario. I do like to do them very quickly, but it's normally the next day. It's not normally the uh, same day of the tournament. So Toby's done an awesome job there. And of course that has resulted in your hand moving up to, uh, already moving up to 15th in the world. So Eric fighting hard there. So Andy Foster. Okay, so uh, multi ball is now ready. Uh, he uh, really should be shooting that at the uh, acid uh, target here. That's um, that's unfortunate. It, it, it'll still have the multi ball lit on ball three, so obviously he didn't start the multi ball, so therefore it will be available to him. Um, and uh, probably the best way would be to plunge and just shoot the mirror because it's uh, it's a fairly automatic shot. Um, you can on a lot of Tommies as well shoot the ram, shoot the orbit here, uh, and then let it simply bounce off this flipper into the acid queen sump. But to be fair, you really need to know whether that's going to work or not. So you need to have either seen another player do it or um, tried it yourself maybe earlier in the tournament, perhaps, because uh, it's not obviously guaranteed to work. Uh, wow, he got the ball back there. That was uh, a stroke of luck, I would say. The ball saved very, very short on this machine. Nice tip over though to Asic Queen. Uh, video mode, but let's see what uh, Johannes makes of this. Yep, <laughs> sort of, it's sort of uh, not exactly very challenging that video mode. You can't, you can't bump into anything. You can't. Uh, uh, I'm sure he can't score any more points. I think it's just a uh, sort of randomish. Who knows? Uh, I'm sure somebody does. I'm sure people that own oh, no. oh wow, he's lost that again. Um, okay, so he doesn't look to be too worried at this stage. And I think maybe this is perhaps uh, getting a bit late for playing, even for Johannes. So, uh, yeah. Rich Mallet's singing Tommy songs, so uh, that's nice. Okay, so Daniele, 741. That is almost certainly going to be enough, I think. There goes Daniele walking down to the machine. And of course it would be the machine that's the very, very furthest away. So 
Anyway, we can't have everything. Uh, he's actually making good progress to the next multi ball because you only have to spell the uh, Tommy letters. So, um, okay. So, another shot. Uh, one more, I think. We'll prepare it for the multi ball. Any any real concern there? He uh... okay. So uh, you're quite right. I don't think anybody's chasing Daniele. I think the fight is for points between the other players and. Uh... Daniele will take seven, I think, for this to put him on 12 points. So, um, purely depends whether Eric can catch Johannes' score and whether Andrew can pass either of them. As to where we finish up on the next, uh, the next position at the moment, it will, of course, be five points to Daniele. And, uh, sorry, 12 points to Daniele and 12 points to Johannes. So, uh, if we stay in that current place, it will be all on the... Oh, no, it's a four-game final. Okay, so it will be all on the final two games. Um, yep, so awesome. Okay, so Andy finally gets his multi-ball going. We'll give him a multi-ball call out. Okay, so um, in control, uh, first jackpot is the ram. Okay, so that gives him, uh, let's see, 20 million, I think. Okay, so he gets the double, double uh, jackpot as well. Okay, this was, uh, this will be better, Andy. So he's uh, doing pretty much the same as Daniele here. Stage, staging shots straight into the mirror. This is Andy at his best. Uh, his multiple uh, control skills are exceptional. Okay, 
original. Uh, it would have been nice to get the silver jackpot as well, but uh, that's a, a respectable score at 263. So he has passed uh, Johannes. So um, that will be good for Daniele. A unfortunate drain, um, but uh, yeah, that gives uh, Andy uh, five points, I think, in that um, in that particular game. Right, okay, back with you. Um, okay, so the rush playfield is incredibly bright. Okay, I've asked Dee to turn the lights down, um, but honestly, the the playfield itself. And the uh, playfield protector just creates such a massive uh, uh, array of lights. So uh, yeah, so, sorry if it's dazzling you in your uh, in your front room or bedroom or wherever you're watching this stream. Um, but there's uh, I, you know, this time of night, I'm not going to do anything to change it. Let's let's say that uh, we are. Uh, so we're playing Rush as the third machine, and Dina is setting up the rig on a fourth machine. So we're, uh, we're uh, not bothering with fishtails. And the last machine, I'm not sure what Dino will, it will be picking, but we will find out very, very shortly. So um, the players are actually not very happy because they didn't want to play Rush, uh, but they had to play it at some point. So therefore playing it third or playing it fourth really doesn't make any difference. Um, so uh, I've, uh, yeah, Sort of suggested it might be nice if they didn't play a three hour game, but uh, we'll have to see what happens. We are getting pretty close to Midnight Madness finals time, um, which is uh, worrying, shall we say. Um, let's just go to the standings. Uh, well, we don't need to, we can see them on here. So we have uh, Daniele on 12 points, we have Johannes on 10, uh, Andy Foster on 6, and Eric. Putterman on the four, so uh, everything to play for here. Um, let's see what happens. Uh, Daniel has already played his ball, uh, 371,500. So uh, I'm guessing he didn't make a lot of progress on anything there. Okay. Uh, Andy, I've just been talking to out in the bar before this game, is that he's uh, finding it difficult to stay awake, but he was pleased that he managed to pull it back slightly with the um, uh, with the game on Tommy. Okay, and uh, Johannes goes down the hall. Uh, there's a lot, a lot of effort involved in this walking, uh, walking down the hall, and we've picked the machines we picked are all at the bottom of the hole, so the guys have to walk just that extra mile. Um, okay, so gets the ball saved. So we'll be interested to see. I, th I think Johannes is actually at the point where he would quite gladly just, um, I don't know, uh, draw a card and go and go home <laughs> uh, but of course uh, the players won't do that they will have to play this uh, this out and uh, and then we all suffer for it tomorrow but there you go uh, there is a ball save but it's quite short on uh, on rush um, Again, straight down the middle, he will get the ball back there. If you uh, followed the um, uh, the chat earlier when we were playing this in one of the earlier finals, uh, the um, 
very very basic rules and nothing uh, nothing complex far too far too late in the evening for that as you can tell from that flipper fumble from eric i think that was uh, sort of partly sleeping um the uh, uh, the objective here is to collect a couple of records yeah, and that then enables the mode when you start the mode at the center shot and the mode start when the when the red light is on the mode is ready when the green light is on it is uh, a shot towards multiball so three shots without doing anything else three shots into this uh, center uh, will start a multiball always stack a multiball with a mode sort of um, definite rule with stern machines uh, pretty much with uh, any machine from the mm, change of the century probably Okay, so uh, Taking the game, Alex. Oops. I nearly uh, uh, managed, I think, to push it out rather than uh, keep it in there. Uh, whether that was actually deliberate or not was another another question. So um, next up, Andy Foster with a massive score of 998,780. Nice control though, that's uh, good to see. But uh, it needs to uh, get more control. Yeah, there we go. So. Um, Okay, multi-ball ready with the next shot. Okay, so uh, multi-ball starts. Okay, the uh, ping golf score on Rush, I think, was a uh, hundred thousand. Oh, sorry, a hundred million. It was extremely difficult to achieve a hundred million. I don't think many people actually did get uh, the target score. But that sort of gives you a bit of an indicator about what score you would expect players of this standard to get to, even at uh, 4 o'clock in the morning, or oh, 4.30 in the evening, right. We've now been streaming for uh, 18 and a half hours.
Yeah, and I think uh, too many drains go down that side. It's, um, uh, I've not played it that much this weekend, and Crush. We had it here for the OK as well. Uh, it's um, definitely um, interesting layout. Uh, obviously, a uh, sort of um, amalgam of uh, a, a number of different stone machines of that era. Uh, some people have said previously that's not necessarily a bad thing. It gives you uh, some familiarity with the game and the shots. That um, say so th this this sort of outlane thing. I, I know I know the outlanes will have been opened up on this machine because we're uh, we're playing it in tournament. Uh, also, the uh, I think the post is removed completely. Um, so there isn't any protection against it doing that, but it sort of um, sort of doesn't make it that an appealing machine to play somehow. Wow, <laughs> that's that that's really fender ball. Um, okay, uh, so there's no no sort of um, ball save period that's preserved during pop bumpers. That's uh, good to know. But Stern introduced that from um, quite a lot of uh, pinball machines, like even from back in, well, Walking Dead that we've seen earlier. The, uh, the, the, the ball save timer starts from the point it leaves the pops, not, uh, not the time it spends bouncing about in pops. So, um, yeah, that was interesting. We've got Ray Day on. Hi, Ray. Uh, it was good to see you at IFPS 16 uh, a couple of weeks ago. We are a little bit late uh, this evening. It is 4.30 here in uh, sunny Germany. It's not very sunny anymore at 4.30, but, um, well, what can you do? We basically um, slightly miscalculated a tournament that we ran today. Uh, we were doing uh, group match play with... Uh, Four players, seven, five, three, one, and um, the array of players we have here this weekend is uh, pretty phenomenal. It's like the top two players from 16 different countries and 124 players in total. And uh, we'd calculated like seven hours for running those qualifications and it took nearer 11. So um, we are running currently around four hours over. This is the next to the last game in the final. So we have played two games of a four game final so far. And uh, you can see the scores uh, up here. We've had to, um, uh, the third game was supposed to be Fishtails. And uh, unfortunately there was a flipper problem on the right hand flipper was not um, making properly so we've swapped a rush and then we're going to a mystery machine for machine number four that uh, Dina has set up the uh, second rig on so um, that's a bit more excitement to bring you from this uh, wonderful stream at Balls and Balls in Fulda. Uh, that is the plan at the moment, uh, Neil, yes. So we are planning um, a, a full week of pinball here in Germany around the World Championship IFPA uh, 18. Um, Organisation has, has started for that, but we haven't really got any firm plans in place yet. But they will start to develop. Um, this is obviously a real major tournament for Bulls and Balls and for Toby, the country director. So um, I think once we get this one complete, then uh, we will start to think towards um, next year. Power drain uh, for poor Andrew, 
but uh, he's making um, more progress here than, uh, than the others. Currently on 14 million. Um, Johannes, who is nearly asleep. Um, Dina, who is... Like, uh, Dina is even more asleep. But believe it or not, this um, uh, and Wars is actually full of people at the moment. There are some really, really mad people who are playing a Midnight Madness tournament um, that started at uh, midnight, believe it or not. We actually managed to start that pretty much closely on time. And uh, uh, that will be playing its final at about 6.30. And uh, we might well still be here. We're, we're, I guarantee we're not going to be here. We are going, as soon as this last game finishes, we are going to try and make some use of our hotel room for the night. So, uh, um, uh, great though it is, uh, it, yeah, uh, we, we, we definitely won't be here any longer than we actually need to be. Uh, but it is, I mean, these things happen, okay. We, we, uh, we don't get the time in this wrong very often. And, um, you know, we need to just learn from this and adjust the tournament schedule for next time we run this particular type of weekend. Um, it is what it is. You, uh, you adapt to the situation that you need to do, and I'm sure everybody else would do the same. So, uh, yeah. Okay, we've learned that Pinball Marble is actually Oli Miko. Um, so, uh, yeah, uh, not surprising that you're going to Sweden. Um, I know you're not Swedish, don't get me wrong. But I tend to think of Scandinavia being a smallish place, and it's really not. It doesn't have many people, but it's actually not. Okay, so uh, Eric, I think, won that game uh, fairly easily. So um, we will be uh, moving to the last game, which Dina has set up uh, very, very sensibly on a wonderful machine called Powerplay. So um, uh, hopefully no multiballs, um, no addables involved in this, uh, multiball restarts, anything of that nature. Um, so this is actually a really, really nice machine to, uh, to to bring out the finals. Dina will be updating the scores as we speak. Um, so uh, uh, these numbers will all change. Um, yeah. <laughs> Epic skill shot walk off for Eric. So Eric and Epic are quite, uh, quite good. Okay, so, um, uh, okay, for, so power play, um, all right, be careful with the top flipper, that's the main thing, oh, be careful with the bottom flippers as well. The actual um, uh, best strategy as you plunge is to go over this rollover, that puts the up post up, um, and uh, people tend to focus on getting into the hole, which is uh, of secondary importance. The first importance is get the post up. Once the post is up, you're pretty much in control of the of the game. Um, you can shoot from here to these drop targets, but you don't necessarily have to. You can hold the flipper up and guide the ball down. Okay. Uh, and he's cleaning the the um, uh, the playfield glass. That's very good of him. That's normally our job, by the way. Uh, so. Um, yeah, so that's fine. He lights the thousand bumpers, he also gets the post up here. So now he doesn't need to flip it, he can if he likes. And uh, so this is the, the, the danger in doing that. But And then you have basically two, um, two objectives. Okay? One is to build a bonus. And you build bonus, that's the nicest way, by going in that top hole. Okay. But you can also you can build bonus by going over the lit rollovers at the side. Um, and you can also then knock these drop targets down. Either side will advance you from uh, times two bonus to times three and to times five. So once you're in this position with the post, you are uh, completely protected. So uh, 
you can so you can decide to either shoot the targets or to shoot the side generally you don't there's not much point in advancing bonus until you have some bonus so the best strategy first is he's already on twenty thousand bonus actually so uh bonus multiplier would be very beneficial very nice in lane but the inlanes uh do drop the post so the post has dropped by these two rollers rollovers and also the inlanes uh, either side you can also put the post up by hitting this uh center center target here which may seem a little bit dangerous but if you hit it and the post comes up then the ball comes straight back down you've got the post to protect you so that's actually a pretty safe shot is to shoot straight up at this okay nice catch by andrew andrew it's getting some nice in lanes as all well there so uh, yes i think he's trying to pick these targets off at the moment Got one on this side. He actually grazed it, but uh, didn't quite catch it in the fall in the face. Okay, so that you see gives him. He's now on uh, five times bonus. So um, look it in in good position. So he can't get any more bonus, but he can get points from the table. It's pretty much on fire here. I mean, this is uh, probably as, as good a ball as you're going to see on power play. And uh, to play this at um, 20 to 5 in the morning. Okay. And these guys have been playing pinball since um, 10 o'clock this morning. Yesterday morning, sorry. Actually, been nice, Ray, to have the uh, the UK guys over this weekend. We've got um, we've got four: Dan, Peter Blakemore, uh, Andy, and uh, Kirk Sadler, who's from uh, he owns uh, Tilt uh, Tilt. Um, it used to be called Tilt Coffee Shop, but it's uh, in Birmingham in the UK. Um, so he was helping me co commentate earlier. He's about um, 20 years, well, at least a bit more than 20 years younger than me, but couldn't stand the pace. So I think he's gone off to sleep somewhere, which is uh, perfectly understandable. Um, he's apparently more of a morning person than, a, uh, than an evening person. So, me? <laughs> So Daniele uh, again gets the post up. Um, uh, nice. in lane uh, that's what you need that was a great even much better in lane <laughs> that's uh, when you know things are going well for you three in a row okay finally finally got him um, I think that was just really a matter of time so uh, 
Okay, so Andy well out in the lead on 452,000. Um, that's going to take some uh, some catching. You've really got to have a, a pretty awesome ball to get that sort of score. Johannes shot for the uh, for the up target. It took a while to come up there, which was surprising. And you can literally just keep tapping it backwards and forwards here until you get the ball in the position that you want it. Okay. Oh, that was a great nudge. Absolutely great nudge to put it into the uh, into the saucer there. That awesome. And again. Okay, and that's the sort of sensible feed uh, from the top flipper. The top flippers can be dangerous, of course. It's like um, I always call them Elwin flippers because of uh, Iron Maiden. The, uh, the the straight down the the out lane shot uh, with the upper flipper on Maiden is uh, legendary. So, yeah. Right, thank you. <laughs> Which, yeah, tiebreaker tie is probably something we would uh, prefer to avoid if uh, given a chance. So, uh, with the, so if Jan Hannes comes third, uh, okay. We're on 11, 11, 11, 15, and we're playing 7, 5, 3, 1. Um, Dina, I wonder if Dina's doing the poll. Uh, I think Dina's going to sleep, so um So uh, I think I might just need to go and just go and ask her to run the poll, just give me a second. Okay, so um, yeah, she was actually asleep. <laughs> she was uh, asleep drinking a glass of wine and uh, trying to attend to a computer at the same time. So uh, Dina is going to start a Twitch poll uh, where everyone at home, all you wonderful viewers, will get the chance to make a vote for your favorite player out of the four finalists. So. Keep an eye on the chat. On the chat, you'll see the poll will appear very, very shortly. She's typing it in now, and uh, please uh, give a vote uh, for your favourite player. They will receive a prestigious JDL pin badge, and uh, maybe progress to the favourite player of the year, the person with the most pin badges, uh, by the end of 2022. So um, I'll. Dina will give me a nod when the poll is out. Uh, doesn't cost anything. Easy, easy to, uh, easy to implement. Oh, nice. Okay, I think um, Andy's going to be pretty happy with where he's sitting at the moment with 520 million points. So, uh, wow. So, next up, Daniele Acciari, ball two. So let's see what he can do. Okay, okay, so there's a five minute poll running now. So um, say please uh, just go on your computer, just send that uh, send that poll to which player you think should be the favourite for for this. Don't want to influence you at all. We uh, we have favourites already for this tournament. Um, OK, 
Okay, so, um, right. Danielli, of course, is a uh, favourite being four points in front, but... Mm. I think he's hit that target in the centre a couple of times now when the ball unfortunately drains. So, uh, Johannes on 97. Uh, okay, so uh, we're going into the last ball, the final ball of this final. Uh, this is the second final that we've run today. Uh, we did a final earlier on around 5 36, 7 o'clock, can't remember when, uh, on group match play. And uh, that seems such a long, long time ago. Uh, anyway, that's pinball. Okay, so unfortunately, Eric flicks it straight down the out lane. That's the um, Keith Elwin flipper shot. So 78. Um, Currently in third place, uh, but Danielli to play at 47. Um, I don't think Eric is uh, in a particularly safe position at the moment. So uh, let's let's see what happens next. Okay. And Andy just keeps powering on, so um, yeah, I think he uh, this game must be uh, must be made for him. It's um, it's been a very good friend, and, and uh, really nice to see because Andy's played some great pinball, uh, and uh, we all know him to be an awesome player. He, he came over here. Uh, for a tournament a couple of years ago, a tournament uh, series, and was in, I can't remember how many finals, but it was a lot. And uh, he went home from here with a lot of, uh, a lot of Whopper points. Um, he's UK's number one player. He was also playing at IFPA 17, out in Florida. So, uh, well known to I think a lot of the American community, as well as in uh, in Europe, uh, great ball, great game, um, absolutely well played. That's uh, that's awesome. So Andy Foster would then be on eighteen points. Um, so there is only Daniele Acciari, who is capable of. Um, beating that, if he gets uh, five points, he will go to 20. If he gets three points, he will get joint 18. So, uh, yeah, okay, let's, uh, let's see what happens. And that's it, ball gone. So Daniele will not take that. Uh, Johannes now will. Let's uh, let's see what happens. It's, uh, it's this one has been a really really strange game. And that was a great move. Wow, has he tilted? Yeah, he has. Okay. Uh, so, <laughs> um, I think we might finish up in a, uh, uh, no, no, I think, I think we're okay. So, uh, Andy Foster, um, all right, well, I'll wait for Dina to fill in the sheet. Let's see, let's see where we are. My, I'm sure my math mathematical capability is somewhat uh, depleted due to the lateness of the hour. 
So let's uh, let's let the experts put the numbers in the computer and see where we finish. Well played, Andy. Uh, certainly, Andy is going to be in first place. We do have a tie break between Daniele and Johannes Ostermeyer. Um, shall we play that on Dracula, maybe? We don't have a Dracula here, of course, but uh, yeah. Dina will be now be having a heart attack um, because we are we are down to a tie break. And we have to play the tie because of IFBA rules. You cannot, um, you cannot, you have to break ties in the first four places. So we need to play something between the two players. Um, Dina, Dina's talking to the players now. She's taking them into the hall. I'm going to switch you to the hall view. And... Uh, We're playing uh, Walking Dead, and it looks like we're going to be playing that without... Uh... Again, one Ball Walking Dead. One Ball Walking Dead, OK. No streaming. no streaming. Well, I'm going to stream from this camera, so uh, so let's just bring the, bring the camera across. OK, so this is um, a tie break for uh, second and third place. Okay, uh, so we can uh, we can see the we can see the place. So, why didn't Johannes play that ball on session? Which um, he did he did play the ball. It, he just uh, he just lost. Yes, this is one ball on the Walking Dead. So um, and say so this is to break the tie uh, for second and third place. Um, decision between the two players, which is absolutely fine. So. So Johannes uh, straight into prison multi ball. Now, when we played a tie break on this earlier, uh, that was two ball, uh, but Johannes scored 400 million points uh, with two balls. Yeah. So um, he's already got, uh, yeah. Okay, so that's end of ball, but he's put up a he's put up a challenge. Let's um, let's zoom in a bit further, see if we can see the scores. So 17, 17 million, okay. It starts riot. That's a, uh, that's a really, really. Oh no, I'm sorry. That was a riot shot. It didn't start riot the mode. Okay. So, uh, yeah. I mean, the, these two, Johannes and uh, Daniele, are of course great friends. They are incredibly competitive, both of them, against, uh, particularly against each other. So that's the end. <laughs> Daniele takes third place. Johannes takes second. Let's put uh, some fireworks on the screen. Uh, that's been an amazing event. Uh, so, 5 a.m., yeah, pretty close. We are now going to close down and uh, we will uh, be back again tomorrow. It'll be around about midday. We start up a bit of a late start on uh, Saturday. So thanks very much, everybody, for tuning in. Um, see you again tomorrow. Uh, look forward to that. OK, we have another full day for you. I'll uh, tell you more about it tomorrow. OK, good night and thank you very much. Bye bye.